Continuing to keep you updated on the Micah Miller case, JP speaks again. That's right, we are now up to video number seven. He took a little mini break, and I was wondering, you know, whether or not maybe his lawyers had spoke with him and told him, you know, you got to kind of knock it off with these videos because you may say something that gets you in trouble. He did not put one out on Saturday, June 15th. However, he was right back to it again on Sunday, June 16th, uh, back on that True Crime Re channel on TikTok that he's been releasing these videos to. He said a lot in this one, and uh, we're going to cover it. But also, video has now been released back when JP was pardoned, or he was at the time appealing for a pardon to the charges against him from 1998 when he ran that woman down uh, with the car, not once, but twice. So we are going to talk about that as well, along with a bunch of other things. And I just got to say to you guys up front, bear with me as I go through this video. I have not been feeling very well today. Um, right now, I'm probably at the best that I felt all day. I was got way later of a start than I wanted to. Uh, I was in bed a good portion of the day battling uh, just a horrible migraine, sore throat, just all kinds of not fun things. And so, um, you know, again, I, I appreciate your patience with me. I'm dedicated to bringing you guys the news no matter how I feel because, uh, well, again, you know, I am I'm dedicated to doing this for you guys. I know many people rely on me. I would appreciate your prayers. You guys lift me up in prayer that I, uh, you know, continue to, you know, feel better. I, I'm I'm on the right track. I'm not all the way there yet, but um, as usual, I got my coffee here. Uh, hopefully, that'll help with the, the migraine as well. Uh, but here we go. Look, and as always, look, we got to kick it off with the intro. I got to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story, how did I go blind, how do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see, I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work here, and you would like to contribute with a donation to bless what I do, you could do that a few different ways. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video, or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash news. link in the description. Hey, do you guys want to get access to all of these videos before they ever hit the main YT channel? Well, when you join my Patreon, that is exactly what you are going to get, along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me there. Again, it's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you again to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So let's get into it. Um, and again, I appreciate your guys' patience. Bear with my voice. It's not the best right now either, but I'm going to get through it. We had JP back again, putting out a video on Sunday, June 16th. He covered a bunch of different things in this, and boy, did he ever say some things. And I want to, you want to talk about, you know, if you ever wanted to teach a class on projection, I think that you should show people this video from JP because wow, was it on full display here. How did he kick it off? Well, the first thing he does, because, you know, he just can't help himself. He said, some people were making fun of me in a previous video because of, you know, the sniff. I have the sniffles. And there was a lot of people alleging that JP may have been on drugs uh, at the time that he was, you know, doing some of these videos. I, I don't know whether he was or not. But JP said that he has a medical condition. He says he has a tick. He's had a tick for a while, which he claims causes him to sniff. So... I'll leave it there. Y'all can, you know, chime in on that in the comments if you want to, or make more of that if you want to. Then he starts getting back into uh, what Micah was diagnosed with. Uh, some of this we've heard before, but but it was interesting how he really, because he's really trying to paint this narrative that this this whole case is about mental illness. He said that in this video. This is He goes, at some point, we're all going to have to come to terms with the fact that this is about mental illness. No, it's not. No, no, it's not about mental illness at all. So he says that, you know, Micah was diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar 2, and dependent personality disorder. 
And he said that the ones that really stuck with her the most were schizophrenia and bipolar 2. He talks about with schizophrenia, how she was hearing voices, uh, the bipolar 2. He said that it, you know she would act like she was high all the time. She would be, you know, for, forgetting that she was even married. She'd be playing chess by herself. Uh, just all, all these crazy things that he, he was saying here. And... He said that, you know, also delusional. She'd be delusional many times. And this is according to JP, that he would often have to play into Micah's delusion by saying things like, oh, he used to be a double agent and, you know, he resigned from that because, well, he wanted to be dedicated to his wife, Micah, and he'd have to sometimes show, you know, proof of the marriage to her with the marriage certificate. But these were all things he claims that, helped Micah to take her medicine. Um, again, painting the picture that Micah was this just extremely sick woman. He did everything he could to help her with the medicine. And again, bipolar 2, schizophrenia. By the way, no proof shown, okay? Remember, he said that you know, he's got 350 pieces of proof that would, you know, back all these claims up. Not that we would believe it because <laughs> with the amount of things that this guy has the capability to doctor and and you know you know write up and, and whatever to, to make it seem otherwise is, is is very high on you know up there. So again, I don't even know if we would believe it. And then he gets to March 11th, which <laughs> he says this was a turning point in their life. And this is where you know the projection really starts in because he claims that on March 11th, Micah had accused him of a bunch of things that weren't true, slashing her tires, putting a tracking device on her car, and posting. Uh, you know, a, a topless photo of her. These are all things that we've talked about before that have been not only confirmed by, you know, by sources and, and you know, by police reports, but also by JP himself. So he's claiming that on March 11th, this is, you know, Micah's going rogue here and accusing him of all these things, right? Slashing her tires, putting a tracking device on her vehicle, and posting a topless photo of her. JP says that all of those things are not true, but we already know that to be a lie. We already know that to be a lie. It's already been proven. He did have her tracked by a private investigator. We know her tires were slashed. He purchased the, you know, the, the deflatable device. You can get it online to put it on her tires. We know that he posted a topless photo of her in a Facebook group because he admitted to it. And I covered this at the time. There was an email that JP had sent to her back on April 15th where he apologized for these things. He admitted that when I, I act in the flesh, when someone hurts me, I do everything in my power to hurt them back. Again, real nice behavior of a pastor, right? And he said in the email to Micah that he even called it an evil act of putting that picture up there of her in a Facebook group. And that if she came home, you know, he would, he would get her a brand new car and all these things. So he's admitting in this email to the damage that he did to the car. And he's admitting to putting up the picture of her. But now in this video that he puts out on June 16th, he's claiming that none of those things happened. It gets even better because then he goes on to say that that week of March 11th, um, and, and by the way, there's there's a lot of other things out there as well about March 11th that haven't even really come out. And some people are saying that it's like so vile that it can't even be mentioned yet because uh, the evidence has already been submitted to the FBI, so we'll we'll leave it there and see where it goes from that point. But JP is also claiming that that week of March 11th, here here's where your projection really comes in. He finds an Apple AirTag in his vehicle, which he says, I can only assume was put in there by Micah. <laughs> so this guy had Micah, or, or Micah was having this guy followed. Okay, that's interesting. And he talks about how on March 13th, that he's at a gas station. Uh, now, I don't know if this was the same gas station um, where, you know, my, actually I think it was the Honda dealership when Micah was at the Honda dealership trying to get her uh, her vehicle fixed after JP had the tires slashed. But there, there may have been another altercation at the gas station too. There's so many of these things to be perfectly honest with you guys. Sometimes I'm just forgetting just because there's just so much. The, the amount of police reports that were filed between these two. Yeah, it's crazy. So JP says he's at this gas station on March 13th and he sees this woman in a vehicle. He says he, he didn't recognize the woman at first, but he, he says that she was a very beautiful woman. And, and lo and behold, as he, he took a closer look, he says it was Micah. And she was, he says, videotaping her. Shows you from the area, the, the era that JP is from. 
But I get it. You know, I'm from that era too. Videotape. I say that sometimes as well. Recording. Okay. So he says he claims he sees Micah recording him and, you know, just stalking him and following him like that. And then JP says that he started videotaping her too. I'm just using his words. So the, so the two of them are allegedly here at the gas station, both recording each other. And JP is claiming that Micah was the one that was following him, that put an Apple AirTag in his vehicle. And he's denying all of these claims that he stalked her, that he had her follow, that he slashed her tires, and that he put out this topless photo of her, uh, you know, all together. Again, we've already proven that he has done this. He admitted it himself in his own email. So what does this show me here? That the delusion and, and everything that JP is saying about Micah, the mental illness, these are all things that he is suffering from, okay? It's just my opinion from what I see. We already know it. I mean, JP has admitted to his own mental health issues before and the fact that he needed lithium. But no, this is, again, and look what he said to you at the beginning of the video where he says that, we're all going to have to some point come to the conclusion that this case is about mental illness. No, it is not. That's what he wants you to think that it is, but that's not what this is all about at all. Not by a long shot. All right. Let me let me move on here to this other piece because um, <laughs> this, this video, th this was by a TikToker who put this out. Um, I will put a link in the description uh, to this. Um, and you guys can can watch it for yourself. I'm actually going to link the video to uh, JLR Investigates because um, he had the the clip of of what happened here. Um, in the in the in the clip that was shared with the TikToker about the pardon. If you remember back in 1998, this is uh, when JP had you know hit that woman with his with his vehicle not once but twice, um, and there were charges for that, obviously. Well. There is now video that came out that showed JP in court when he was actually appealing to have a pardon from when this incident took place. And it was very interesting because you can hear JP, and for those that want to watch it, you can see it on the clip. You know, he's appealing, saying that, you know, this happened over 20 years ago. Okay, remember, it was back in 1998. Now, I don't know the exact year that JP had tried to get the pardon. They were saying 20 years ago, so I'm assuming this was like around 2018 then somewhere around there. Um, obviously it would have been, if it was 2018, it would have been when him and Micah were already married. So I think he would have already been divorced from Allison at that point. But JP, along with his lawyer, they were appealing for this pardon and they were saying that, you know, well, look at what JP has done since then. He's cleaned up his life. He's a lot older now. He started a church. And at that point, you can hear JP on the clip talking about how, you know, he's built this church up to 500 members. And, you know, he has all these other ministries where he helps, you know, homeless, homeless veterans. And he has a, a, a private Christian school. And so all these things were said in the clip that, you know, again, we're trying to paint JP in this good light. Like he's this good guy now. He's had this huge turnaround, you know, and JP was talking about, you know, it, it's, it's only right. I, I believe that it's only right <laughs> to have my civil liberties restored back to me and have this you know, have me, you know, be able to wipe the slate clean. Now, I do understand that in South Carolina, apparently you can have a pardon uh, revoked if you're getting caught up in, you know, inappropriate behavior again. And so whether or not that happens, I don't know. But look, based off all of JP's behavior after uh, that court date, he did, by the way, he did get the pardon. The judge did grant it to him. Um, in, in the clip, and you don't hear them say that, but he did eventually get that pardon. So you know, his little trick worked, but, you know, you can't have that taken away. And if you look at everything that JP did after that, I mean, just look from, if, if that was from 2018, from 2018 up until Micah's death, I mean, it would seem to me like he absolutely should have that pardon revoked based off what he has done. And, and there could be a whole slew of other charges against him. Just look, I mean, he's under FBI investigation now. So, this thing is is definitely picking up here, and if you know if we thought JP was going to go silent, he he took the one one day break on Saturday, June fifteenth, and he was right back to it again. I want to bring up another point here, and then I'll wrap this video up for you. Uh, but uh, this was a great point that was made by Robbie Harvey, who's been doing uh, an excellent job as well, covering this story of Mike Miller. 
you know, for all the claims, because, you know, JP wants us to think this is about mental illness, but for all the claims that Micah was this sick woman, if you know, let, let me let me interject with something before I get to what Robbie said. You know, I, as JP, I was listening to this video, his latest one from the 16th, and he was talking about, you know, these are all the things that Micah had been diagnosed with, right? Bipolar 2, dependent personality disorder, and schizophrenia. He said these are all things that she had been diagnosed with for the last seven years since 2017. Well, who was she with since 2017? JP, meaning that she didn't have any of these issues before she was married to him. Thanks for telling us the truth there, JP, because the common denominator in all of this appears to be you. Okay, so it's very interesting. He wasn't saying that Micah struggled with these things for her whole life. He was saying that she struggled with them from the time of 2017 when she was with him. <laughs> See, this is why his lawyer should probably advise him to stop talking because, yeah, all this is eventually probably going to be brought up against him. Now, let me get to what Robbie said because tying it back into the mental illness, he says this, if Micah was as sick as she, as JP claims, right? She needed her medicine, all of these things. Why is it then that she had so many responsibilities and so many jobs while working at Solid Rock? That's a great point. He mentions the youth ministry. Micah was in charge of the youth group. And Robbie claims that he has spoke with several parents that at one point had their own youth in there. And they said that Micah was just a wonderful person. There were no signs to them that she struggled from any sort of a mental illness at all. Uh, when they talked to their their teens, they, they said that they loved Micah. She was a great teacher. She was fun. She was basically the face of solid rock. So again, if she was truly as sick as JP claims, why was she put in charge of so many different ministries there at the church? Just asking some questions here. That was a good one. So to kind of sum it all up here, the projection of JP, it just the fact that, again, he would even say these things and deny tracking her, denying putting up that photo of her, he didn't slash her tires, and that Micah, Micah was the one who tracked him, put an Apple AirTag in his vehicle, and then was recording him at the gas station. We know that Micah was recording him because he was the one stalking her, Okay. We know this, but he's trying to flip it around and continue with this whole narrative that, no, she was the crazy one. It is absolutely unbelievable that this continues. But look, he's not going to give up on this. You've got to understand, for people like JP, right, they, they, they can never admit when they're wrong. He admitted this all in that sermon that he did about personality types, right? Remember, he, he claimed that he was he had the same personality as as Lucifer, the devil himself, Hillary Clinton, and uh, even uh, Hitler, right? So, and he even said too that, you know, his personality type was like a high D. They can never admit when they're wrong. So he won't. Um, and as far as repenting, true repentance goes, yeah. I mean, if you can't admit that you're wrong, I don't think you're ever truly going to repent. So he'll continue with this and we'll see where it all goes. I'll keep it covered for you. I appreciate you guys again. Bearing with me as I get through this, and, and your prayers, again, are, are so much appreciated. I hope I was able to present the information uh, in the same way that I normally do. Again, I, I did the best that I could. I welcome your thoughts, as always. You can drop it down below in the comment section. And again, if you enjoy and appreciate the work that I do here and you would like to contribute with a donation, you can hit that super thanks button on the YT video or join my Patreon for as little as 5 bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, that's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the wolves, we always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet accepted Christ into your life and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, 
habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.